The Hurl May is perhaps my favorite Calabatus nymph. Here are the materials you'll need to tie this deadly fly. So let's tie the Hurl May. I'm going to use some olive 70 denier tying thread. You could also use tan. Cover the hook shank tying thread. Trim off the excess. Have that good firm thread base to secure our materials on. So we're going to tie in the tail. For the tail, we're using a model turkey flat. And I'm going to isolate three fibers to imitate the three tongs, or tines rather, the calabatus tail. Carefully trim those. Set those aside. And the tails can be half to even three quarters of the shank length long. So a loose wrap over top, a couple of wraps, and then I'm going to place one wrap right underneath. That'll help splay the tails. And then we're just going to secure the balance of the fibers down the hook shank to roughly where the thorax of the fly is going to start. And we'll just break the teeth of the feathers apart and do this at the end of the fly too. You can sort of see how we've got a nice three-pronged tail, just like the natural calabatus nymphs have. And these model turkey flats work great for that because they're supple enough to move in the water, yet stiff enough that they will maintain their form. You know, that splayed look of the natural nymphs. Now we're going to tie in our rib material. For this we're going to use some fine silver wire. Secure it right at the two-thirds mark. Hold it along the near side of the hook. And secure that right down to the base of the tail. Mark that in the material clip. And now we're going to tie in our shellback material. And this is a, as you can see, a rather well used section of a modeled turkey quill. And I'm just going to rotate it over. I'm going to use my scissor points to remove a slip that's roughly half the gape of the hook in width. That's going to be used for our shellback. I'm going to tie that, I'm going to even the tip area. Lay that flat. Make sure our thread's positioned. Lay that against the hook and secure it back to the base of the tail. And if you look at your feather, you want to make sure, if you can, it's not critical, but the most prominently marked side of that feather is actually facing down, so when we fold it forward, it's going to come over top of the fly like so. Now we're going to tie in our body material. And the body material for this fly is two sections of tan ostrich hurl and one strand of olive. You could certainly tie an all olive or an all tan, but I find the mixture of the two colors is my favorite and has been my most consistent producer. Because often the nymphs are kind of a tannish coloration with a little olive, little olive hue to them and mixing the two strands with the one olive is a great way to imitate them. So we're just going to stroke these together and because we tied them in as one they should behave and they will behave as one. Oops, if we can get around the hook point here. And just wind them forward. Just like that. And the Calabatus nymphs have prominent abdominal gills. Ostrich hurl does a great job of suggesting them. So we just tie that off. A couple of wraps, a couple in front to lock them in place. Trim. Now we're going to pull our shellback material forward over the body. Now, rather than trimming off the hurl, if you moisten your fingers slightly and just stroke the fibers down, you kind of part them along the side of the fly and underneath. 
We can hold our shell back material in place. A few wraps to secure, but do not trim off the excess. We're going to leave that. That's going to form part of the wing case as well. Now we're going to take our fine silver wire. We're actually going to counter wrap it, going opposite direction of the way we form the body, and zigzag that through the ostrich hurl over top of the shell back, and I actually apply down pressure as I come down the near side. If I apply the pressure too soon, I run the risk of the torque of that motion rolling the shell back out of position. So we're going to wind that up, flip in front, go around the shank a few times, adds a little bit of weight, and then just using a pulling and twisting motion, break away the excess wire. Now you could tie this in a standard non-flashback mode, if you will, or look, but I like the flashback look. So for the flashback part, you could use standard Mylar tinsels, but I really like using these Opal Mirage tinsels. And this is a medium. I'm tying a large calabatus here. It's on a number 12, probably number 14s or 16s are more common as you head to southern latitudes. So we're just going to take that Mylar, put it on top, like so. And now we're going to fold our shell back material, lock that in place. Bring the tying thread forward, and we're going to tie the legs now. At least get them in place, nice and secure, and then we'll fold them back into position. So for the legs, we're going to use the same material we did for the tail. And we're going to isolate anywhere from six to eight fibers. If I stand them perpendicular to the stem, the tips will stay even. Come in with my scissors, trim them away. sure those tips are relatively even. It's not critical. It's not like a fish is going to come up with a straight edge and measure your fly. If he does, I don't think we'll be catching that guy. We're going to position these with the tips protruding forward about half the shank, half to three quarters of the shank length. It's okay to have slightly longer legs. Let's exaggerate the features. They'll move a little better in the water. And of course, if you think they're too long, you can always gently grab and just pull back slightly, I'm just moving ever so slightly under the thread so I get them where I want them. Secure them in place. Trim away the excess. The thorax can be made out of the same color, two colors of ostrich hurl that the body were made of, but I find that a contrasting dark peacock thorax seems to we get the fish excited when they're chasing calabatus nymphs during or just prior to a hatch. Tie in those two strands of hurl, stroke them together, they're tied in together so they'll behave as one. And we're just going to wind those forward in close touching turns, right up to the tying thread. Careful not to crowd the eye. Tie off, trim. Now we're going to divide our legs. So I'm going to rotate the fly slightly, and I just sort of massage and preen, if you will, the legs to sort of break them apart. And I want to divide them as best I can into two equal clumps, preferably three per side to match six legs. I'm into all insects, whether terrestrial or aquatic. So we'll just fold, there's three there. And I just secure them back. And I actually apply thread tension. That actually helps flare them. So they're tucked along the side. And then I come in with a near side set of legs. And do exactly the same. I'm not quite happy with the position of those, so I'll just Make sure they're tucked right along. I want them to flow right along the side like that. Because when the mayfly swims, he'll tuck those legs along, and when he rests, he rests with his legs, his tail and abdomen arched, and his legs in an outstretched position. So that's what we're trying to suggest here. And then we're going to pull over, 
still not quite happy with the way those legs are. So if you're not happy, fix them. There we go. Group together. And then pull the shell, sorry, the wing case material over the top. Secure. Two or three wraps. Trim. You can keep playing with the legs. And then pull the opal over the top. And this again helps suggest the trapped gases that the calabatus nymphs use, just like coronamid pupa, to help elevate their way up to the surface to hatch. And then their final transformation to winged adult. As that thorax splits open, those gases escape and help the adult inside emerge, kind of get shot out, if you will, from the nymphal shuck. And now we're just going to whip finish, and the tying portion of our hurl may is done. Spill a nice, neat head. Could have, whoops. See the legs are outstretched. We've got nice splayed tails. And we have one final step to do. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is to reinforce the head area and the top of the thorax and the wing case is put a clear coating on it. The epoxy substitute, this UV clear fly finish is excellent. We're going to use our dubbing needle to apply that. So just put a little drop of it on the dubbing needle. You can always add more. Just on top. And this is just thick enough that it won't run all over the place. And thin enough that it'll sort of just let it sit for a few seconds. It levels itself out nicely. You don't need a lot. And then you just come in with the UV light appropriate to the product you're using and just let it sit there for a few seconds. And your Hurl May is complete. So this is an excellent pattern. This is probably my favorite. When Calabatus are active, this is almost guaranteed to be on my tippet. It has just proven itself to be a excellent Calabatus nymph in Canada, in California, in Utah, all across the western states, tied anywhere from as large as this number 12 through down till 16. It just dynamite little fly. So make sure you have a few of these in your fly box the next time you encounter some Calabatus.